Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video, I'm going to show you the round five game from Rabats. So after the first four games, I was on three out of four, which is great. And in round five, I got paired against a high rated opponent again. <clears throat> now, I was playing uh, Tihan Ivekovic, an opponent I'd faced before in 2019 uh, in the Zagreb Open. And I had the white pieces in that game as well. And she, she either plays the E6 Sicilian or the French. And, well, there was some preparation involved for that game. And we ended up playing a very boring exchange French, uh, thanks to my uh, intentions to, to get her out of her prep. And we drew fairly quickly. So for this game, I, I wanted something exciting and... <laughs> Uh, obviously, I, I've never played the Jabava London system before. Uh, I've started studying it a few months ago when I started preparing the videos on it, which are, by the way, going to be out very soon. And it's an interesting opening, which if, if Black doesn't know how to play against, he could be in trouble fairly quickly. Uh, so yeah, uh, when the pairings got out, uh, I had a whole day to prepare because round four uh, was played, uh, was the only round on, on day three. So I basically had time until 2 p.m. Uh, until from 2 p.m. until 9 o'clock in the morning the next day. So uh, the first thing I started was I started to preparing against her French. And uh, after a while, I... I messaged Milan and said, you know what, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to play. He plays the French. And we go over some lines and he says, well, why don't you play the Jobala? And I said, what? <laughs> I mean, uh, I can play it because I've been studying it, but it's a high rated opponent. So he said, play it all the same. I mean, yeah. So I said, okay, can you get on Skype in the evening? I want to go over some lines with you. He said, okay. So we get on Skype that evening after I'd been preparing the Jobava for, I don't know, two or three hours. And he says, after we finish looking at the lines, well, maybe you should go for the French. <laughs> so uh, next morning I wake up, I still don't know what I'm going to play. And then I decided, well, I'll try this out. I've never tried it out before. I wanted an interesting game. I didn't want uh, a boring game like last time. So here's what happened. So d4, she plays d5. And I go knight c3, knight f6. Now I could go bishop g5, the Veresov, but I, I played the Jobava. And here, uh, the most popular way to play is c5. And after e3, black exchanges and plays a6. The idea is you want to prevent knight b5. Uh, if after c5, e3, uh, black goes wrong, for example, with knight c6, uh, then this is game over already. So in this position, black is just lost. Because if queen a5, then, then pawn to c3. But after bishop f4, she surprised me. Uh, the second most popular way to play is, is bishop f5, by the way, against which you play f3, g4, and just positions look like this. Basically, and black can choose either h5 or h6. So in this position she played a6, and this can be slightly annoying because she played it before c5. So I go e3, and she goes c5. Uh, she can, by the way, go e6 as well. She goes c5. And now I have an option, which I was sort of prepared for, but not really. So I can get either go knight f3, and if she takes on d4, then we are in the same line, the main line. Uh, but after c5, since she hadn't played e6 yet, I can also go dc5. And after knight c6, I can play knight f3. And after e6, I can go knight a4. And I knew this existed. I remember it basically up to this point. Bishop takes, knight takes, and queen takes, knight. But I didn't know the evaluations. I didn't know what I should do. Uh, it's basically a nice Karo Khan setup for white, which I would be familiar with, but black has a nice center and can start undermining my c3 pawn with b5, b4. Uh, so after c5, I just played knight f3. Now the only downside, the only possible downside of knight f3 in this position 
uh, is that black could choose to play c4. But luckily for me, I'd, I'd been preparing for those lines two months back because I thought that was interesting. Or I didn't think it was that interesting. I thought if white doesn't know how to punish it, then it's interesting for black. So I knew what to do against c4 and I was going to play e4. And now if she decides to take the pawn, so d4, then knight e5. And basically this pawn is dropping or black plays b5. If black doesn't play b5, then I play bishop c4 and I have a great ITP position where all my pieces already are already perfectly placed. Uh, and if b5, I go a4. And since the pawn is pinned to the rook, I'm threatening to win a pawn. So basically uh, b4 is forced and now bishop takes c4. And of course, if pawn takes knight, then bishop f7 is a mate in one. So she would have to play e6 and the position is... Well, I, I like this position for white. So, I played knight f3, I was prepared for, for c4. She can also play knight c6, but she took. And in this position we now transpose to what is very normal. Mm -hmm. She can play knight c6 here. Uh, a more popular move, uh, in my opinion, or a better move is bishop g4. And this leads to very interesting positions. I was actually hoping for this. Now after h3 it's best to take. Queen takes f3, and after knight c6, white castles queenside. And black immediately can start putting pressure with b5. Uh, and it's a double-edged position in which anything can happen, which is what I was hoping for. But you went knight c6, uh, and against knight c6, you go knight e5. And this was basically all my prep. I knew that I should go knight e5. Now, if she plays bishop d7, like in the game, I wasn't really sure what to do. The other option is pawn to e6. Uh, and now I can do this and go knight a4. And the idea is basically to prevent c5, which isn't really prevented. But let's say black plays bishop d6, takes, takes, and bishop d3. Eventually black is going to get in either e5 or c5. There isn't really much I can do to prevent it. For example, castles, castles, a5 to play bishop a6. I can just solidify with b3. Bishop a6, knight c5, bishop d3, queen d3, and now basically black plays knight d7, and I have to trade, and then e5 or c5 comes. And this isolated pawn isn't really enough of an advantage for me to, to, to be able to claim the time better. But after knight e5, she played bishop d7, and since I didn't know what to do, uh, I actually have decided just to take the bishop pair, and see what happens. My, my worry was that queen b6 may be a good move in some positions. So when I take on d7, unless she wants to undevelop this knight, she has to take with the queen. So I was happy to do this because now it takes two moves to, to threaten my b2 pawn. Okay, here I can do several things. I could go g3, bishop g2. Uh, I, couldn't, I, I cannot go bishop d3 because my d4 pawn is hanging. Uh, and I can also go bishop e2. So I went bishop e2. Uh, I think that's fine. Pawn to e6, castles, and bishop d6. And I, I, I don't know if I should take or not. Excuse me. If I take the bishop, probably black stands slightly better because I have a knight on c3 and I'm castled short. But if I don't take... If I go, for example, bishop e3, then this bishop is better than mine. So I didn't want to do that. Uh, and if I go bishop g3, then she can exchange and actually make my pawn structure worse. Probably in this position I have to take with the f-pawn, although I'm, I'm not sure opening up my rook. But that doesn't give me anything because I don't have a dark squared bishop anymore. I really don't have anything to put pressure with. So probably h takes. And again, this is probably slightly better for black. So against bishop d6, I just took. And queen takes d6. And now I went for... Uh, we are basically playing a Carlsbad uh, in reverse, in which once I play knight a4, c3, I have what black usually has in the queen's gambit declined, or what white usually has against the exchange Karo Khan. So I was familiar with the position. So I went knight a4. Uh, she castled. And this is the only piece of calculation I had to do up to this point. 
can I play knight c5 or not? Uh, and after a few minutes, maybe, maybe 10 minutes, I did play knight c5. Now, the two moves that were worrying slightly were e5 and knight takes d4. And e5 doesn't work because d5, knight e5, knight d3 should be fine for me. This isolated queen spawn re resembles uh, an open Tarash French very much, which is a posi position she knows. It's not easy for me to blockade on d4, but it's not really easy for her to play knight e4 either. Uh, so I thought this would be okay. Uh, and the other option, which looked more menacing, was knight takes d4. And after queen takes d4, pawn to e5. But I don't have to play queen e3. I don't have to play knight b7, which I think loses. I can just go queen b4 and now she can resign. I'm a piece up. Because after rook c8, for example, I just go knight d3. And she doesn't even have time to take the c2 pawn. So knight c5 and there's nothing she can do to punish this. So she plays knight d7. Uh, I traded. Queen takes and pawn to c well, pawn to c3. And now we have a very normal position, which I know is perfectly equal because I've played it with both colors in multiple openings. And the plan for black here is to undermine the c3 pawn, go for a minority attack. So b5, which she ended up playing, played a3, rook a b8, and I played bishop d3. My source of counterplay is undermining e6, so I basically want to go f4, f5 and try to break open the position there. And in this position, she played knight a5. Maybe possible to just go a5 here. Uh, I think that's a viable option. But I think I, I, I probably would just play f4 here. I wouldn't play b4. Although b4 is also fine. And, and this position shouldn't really be a problem for me. We both have one weakness and it's basically not going to be possible for either side to to put enough pressure on the on the on the opponent's weakness to win it uh, i can defend mine with the rook uh, queen and bishop i can play rook a5 if the knight moves if the knight doesn't move then there's no way for her to 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 defend this pawn enough or to put pressure on c3 at all okay but after bishop d3 she played knight a5 and now i'm happy to play b4 because the knight has to go back i basically gained the tempo uh, if the knight goes back to c6, then I just go a4. She's preventing her queen from defending the a4 square. And and again, if, if she takes, then I believe I'm, I'm better. Uh, for example, something like this. Uh, I think I can just take here. Oh, sorry, I have to. Yeah, I think I can just take. Maybe not. Maybe I have to defend first. No, yo, sorry, my rook is defended. That's stupid. I can just take the knight. Yeah, okay, my rook is defended. That doesn't even work. So, against b4, she went knight b7. And since it's a perfectly equal position, and we have a round in the afternoon, this was played in the morning, I played a4 and offered the draw because it's, it's just equal. And she accepted because there's really not much either of us can do. Uh, I'm going to undermine her weakness. Again, if she takes, now I can take with the queen and and just put pressure on, on a6. If she doesn't take, I'm going to take and, for example, rook, let's say rook c8. So she accepted the draw here, but le let's say she didn't. Probably plays rook fc8. I can just go queen d2 or queen c2. Let's say queen d2 and now knight d6, looking at the c4 square a b5 a b5 rook a5 and as i said this is a weakness this is a weakness for example queen c6 defending b5 putting pressure on c3 i can just go rook c1 and it's really hard to increase the pressure for for either side i i don't know what to suggest for black here let's say getting some luft let's say getting some luft i don't know trading rooks takes takes Again, it's not easy to put pressure on c3 or on b5, and this would probably have ended in a draw somewhere here if she declined. But yeah, after a4, she accepted the draw. Uh, I didn't look at the game with the engine yet. Uh, I just want to turn it on in this final position. 
Yeah, the engine says 0 0.000. The first five moves for black are all zeros. H6 is minus 0 0.1, or rook fc8 is minus 0 0.1. But yeah, that's basically equal. So when the game finished, I said, well, why did you play that boring variation? Why did you play in such a boring way? And she said, well, you're out of luck. I, I, I was actually prepared for this because my boyfriend plays it. So... Yeah, she actually knew what to do against this. It wasn't a surprise at all, so surprise failed. And unfortunately, she'd prepared the passive line, an equal line, not going into any complications. So after five rounds, uh, I was on three and a half, which is still really good. I wanted to make this game interesting. I wanted to play for a win, but I just couldn't. Objectively, the Jabava London, if your opponent wants to have a nice slow game, is just equal for black. Uh, there's not much white can do. Okay, uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this. Do you play the Jabava London? How do you face it? What do you do against it? I'd like to hear your opinion because it's a very interesting opening. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.